everybody. This is Kelly of Rojo Chief Clothing. And this is my Instagram, as you see here. And when you look here, I'm going to click on the link. It will say creator Kelly underscore McAlpine. That's to my personal uh, Instagram account. Um, but right here, it says follow link to my YouTube, Facebook, and clothing below. So click. I'm going to click on this link right here. Then what's going to happen is, is that kids sports um, tea, as you see, baby's clothing, this is a shirt for a toddler. I even have body suits for babies. And then going back. I have the category for also women, of tank tops, I also have polo shirts, I also have long sleeve shirts, as well as hoodies for women as well. And also for men, they have the same thing. Men tank tops, men t-shirts, got v-neck shirts, comes in a variety of colors, sizes. So, you know, check me out. If you would like to have some fashion that honors your ancestors and shows the world that you know exactly who you are and proud of it. Now, let's get into the video. Okay, so on this website, blacktagapparel.com is a shirt selling for $48 and it's the Kuta Kente tee. Now, somebody at Black Tag Apparel apparently did not do their research because if they did, they would know that Kuta Kente was not a real person of African descent. And, but more importantly, they would know that these two names, Kunta and Kente are not African names. They're actually names of Aboriginal people. They're American Indian names. Okay. And they have here, the symbol of the red, black, and green symbolism, which we know is associated with the Pan-African movement. And the Pan-Africanists, they believe that they descended from African slaves. But only how you can know that is by looking up your own ancestors and finding out if they did come from Africa, where they came from Africa, and what boat did they come, come here on, and what plantation were they on. But the thing is, though, that on these plantations, they had Africans and Indians there on the plantation, but they were separated most of the time. So, and Kuta Kente was a made up character, a fictional character that was created by Alex Haley in his book Roots that he plagiarized from a book that was written by a Caucasian man called The African. And here is a picture of Charlemagne the God who works for the Breakfast Club with the Kuta Kente t shirt. And as you know, he's a huge advocate for. Um, African American things or Afrocentric things, and but yet look at the shirt, Kuta Kente. He doesn't even know that Kuta Kente is a fictional character, and it does not have anything to do with people of African descent, but it has everything to do with people of American Indian descent, specifically Choctaw, since those are Choctaw names. So right here, this is Wikipedia, and this is what they have to say about Harold Carlander. He was born September 18, 1908, died March 15, 1996, was an American novelist, folklorist, and anthropologist, and expert in the study of Haitian life. The author of 35 books and plays and numerous scholarly uh, articles, Carlander specialized in the study of African, Caribbean, Afro-American, and Native American cultures. He took 
a special interest in oral literature, cults, and Afro-American cultural connections with Africa. And then you see here, Roots. It says Corlando wrote seven novels, his most famous being The African, published in 1967. The novel was the story of slaves captured in Africa, his experiences aboard a slave ship, and his struggle to retain his native culture in a hostile new world. In 1978, Corlando filed a suit in the U.S. District Court of Southern District of New York, charging that Alex Haley, the author of Roots, had copied 81 passages from his novel, Corlander's pretrial memorandum in the copyright infringement lawsuit claim. Defendant Haley had access to and substantially copied from the African. Without the African, Roots would have been a very different and less successful novel. And indeed, it is doubtful that Mr. Haley had written Roots Without the African, Mr. Haley copied language, thoughts, attitudes, incidents, situations, plot, and character. So as you see here, Kuta Kente is a fictional character. And, you know, Alex Haley tried to pass off the name Kunta and Kente. He tried to um, pass those words off or those names off as African, where they're not African. They are indeed American Indian. And they come from the American Indian language of Choctaw. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys a, a picture of the YouTube video that goes into this. And as you see here, Safa Kuru, he published a video about five days ago. And it says here the name Kuta Kente is of American Indian Choctaw origin, not African. And then it says here, it says at the bottom, he said, in the movie Roots, we see that the lead character's name was Kuta Kente, which... Contrary to popular belief, it's actually composed of two American Indian Choctaw or Chata words. Kuta meaning whistling or to whistle and Kente meaning beaver. So the name Kuta Kente means whistling beaver in Choctaw. And then it goes into the name Toby. And then it says the name Toby is also a Choctaw word that means to make white. Another gem that they threw in there. Okay, so please check out this video and to see exactly what it is that he's talking about, okay? And please give this video a like, please share it, please subscribe if you haven't, I'm out.